the CEO of Nova Gold on. He works on a project in Alaska that's joint ventured with Barrick. We just had the Barrick CEO on yesterday. The company's recent set of quarterly results suggested that they are making advancements towards the project's development as they saw their losses narrow. Let's bring in Greg Lang. He is the president and CEO of Nova Gold, and he joins me now. Greg, thank you so much for being with us. The asset that you own that's your main asset, Donlin in Alaska. Give us a sense of the progress update, where you're at right now, what you told investors in your set of results. Well, Donlin is, uh, you know, it's an amazing asset. It's one of the largest undeveloped gold deposits in the industry. It's got great grade and it's on private land owned by two Alaska Native corporations and we have life of mine agreements with them. But what really sets Donlin apart is we have completed the federal permitting and have largely wrapped up the state permitting. So it's one of the few projects out there that uh, the schedule to development is in the hands of the owners, not the regulatory processes. Now, I, I mentioned that you are uh, doing this in part with Barrick. Yesterday, I had Mark Bristow on. He talked about Lemwana. He talked about Pakistan. But he did not mention Alaska. And I think there's concerns in the investment community about their commitment to continue to fund the project. Can you give us any insights into the conversations you're having about that? Well, sure. I was just up in Alaska with Mark Bristow and his senior team about two weeks ago. And I think they are certainly very committed to the project. You know, we're working with them on uh, developing the plans for the next couple of years, and we expect to be, you know, guiding the market on that in the next few weeks. Even with, uh, you know, the the quality of the deposit that you have there, the stock, Nova Gold, is trading at the lowest level since 2015. You've got this rising U.S. dollar. Um, you've got a lot of macro factors that are exerting pressure on bullion here. What kind of conversations are you having with investors about the about these dynamics that are sort of out of the company's control? Well, it, it's certainly a very turbulent time in the marketplace. A lot of competing pressures, most of which is uh, the strength of the U.S. dollar, rising yields, and the people trying to guess where the Fed is going. But clearly, higher for longer seems to be the uh, what's in store for us, and that has been pressuring gold. We're seeing gold test the $1,800 support level, and that's put a lot of pressure on gold equities. And the developers like Nova Gold are you know, feeling the pressure uh, in an exaggerated way from the producers. So our, our investors look at this, they understand that it's uh, you know, forces of the market largely out of our control. And you know, we've been through these turbulent times before and uh, you know, we think gold is uh, going to rebound. And when it does, it's, the rise is gonna be dramatic. And it will, uh, you know, most of the producers are at multi-year lows. And I think that's gonna change when gold finally uh, finishes consolidating and starts its uh, upward trend again. I guess as, as gold lost its its mojo with respect to its, uh, you know, its traditional investment thesis, it is, you know, you buy it because of debt levels, you buy it because of inflation. And recently, while those two things are still very much with us, that hasn't uh, panned out. Are you losing, you know, out on that thesis too? I hate to bring it up, but Bitcoin and what people call digital gold? Well, I think, uh, you know, gold in just about every major currency in the world, other than the U.S. dollar, is trading at record highs. And I think so if you've bought gold in other currencies, the mojo is still there. You know, what's uh, suppressing gold is the strength of the U.S. dollar. And that's, you know, you have to take a view on how long that can continue. But I think most people expect that as soon as the Fed uh, stabilizes the rates and ultimately starts bringing them back down, if the economy cools, that that's going to be very bullish for gold. Um, and the U.S. gold you prices will with the rest of the world. Sorry, I, I, you mentioned, you know, things that are within your control, uh, you know, developing the mind. There's also um, a feasibility study that you are updating. We have seen inflation, and I'm sure that you're not immune to it. What are some of the updated inputs on that side when it comes to the feasibility study? Where, where are some of the biggest cost increases coming from? Well, we have not uh, guided on any um, increases, but clearly inflation is out there. It's very real. 
and both Barrick and Nova Gold will take that into account in our future planning. You know, fortunately, uh, while inflation is up, uh, gold prices, even at $1,800, still provide a very healthy margin for most of the gold producers, and that would include the future Donlin mine. 